everybody, and welcome back to another episode of The Male Perspective. I am your host, Alana Reed, and today, today on this day, I have the pleasure of sitting down with a gentleman by the name of Quinn Hill. He is the author of a newly released book, One Day at a Time, and I am so looking forward to hearing more about his work and a few other things going on in his life. But first and foremost, as I always do, I take a quick moment to pause, say thank you to you, sir, for making time for me today. Time is a gift. Once we give it, we cannot get it back. So... I truly appreciate you setting aside this time of your day to sit down and chat with me. And with that, sir, welcome, welcome to the show. Yeah, well, thank you, thank you, uh, uh, thank you for that, uh, for thanking me for this uh, opportunity to speak. I'm the one who is uh, gaining something from this. Uh, <laughs> I, I enjoy the uh, everyday learning, the things that happen every day, meeting new people, meeting new instances in your life, and this has now become part of it. It's part of that lexicon of things that I can refer to. Awesome. I love that. I love that. Well, let me jump right in because I have a short amount of time with you today and I want to make sure I get to unpacking all of the wonderful stuff that you've got going on, of which I mentioned in the opening is this new book that you have one day at a time. Very interesting title. So as we get started, I'm kind of uh, would like to humbly ask for you to kind of unpack the book, especially the title. Um, and what will the reader take away from um, from the book? Okay, so uh, starting with the title, One Day at a Time has been my mantra. I've been saying that for 30, 35 years or so. I uh, had an incident d during my military career, and uh, it put things in perspective. And I talked to a guy, and the guy told me, he said, hey, you can't live no more than one day at a time. And I said, okay, and then I started saying it and then he referred me to the to the word and i looked it up in the word and he said it, it it's very clear that uh god doesn't give you your past he doesn't give you your future he gives you today and uh, uh it doesn't mean you don't you don't plan for tomorrow and you don't reflect on what is past but uh, so i started saying one day at a time uh, i've written all my life it's uh, been one of my reliefs. I'm a poor kid. I was born one of those uh, those painfully poor kids, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, I lived the life that a lot of young people are living today, the life of being basically abandoned, then, you know, all of those things. So uh, living that way and then reflecting on after I got told about the one day at a time and then doing the research, it, it was a natural transition to to the fact that the only place I found solace was doing my reading, and I would read anything. It didn't matter if it was a can, a label, and uh, <laughs> so I'm that guy that if you you take away the the ability to read, and then I'm lost. I, oh. I'm completely uh, I'm ple completely unanchored. But and then and writing became an outlet. It became a way to uh, to say the things that you can't say in public sometimes, mm. or say the things in a method or manner that uh that that allows you to include the emotions so the book uh i had always like i said written and my my granddaughter uh, jasmine has always bugged me since she found about how i write about writing a book and i always say yeah in a minute in a minute in a minute so christmas uh, about uh two two and a half years ago she gave me a hardbound copy of my writings and some of, of the some of the narratives and some of the writings and it, it just broke my heart you know that I had that that she wanted it this she wanted it bad enough that she wouldn't spend her money and did all this collecting and preparation without my knowledge so I said okay I'll sit down and I'll write the book oh, so uh you know I I write every year I write a Christmas piece or book for my family uh, and I don't, it's not on wide uh, publication or none of that stuff. I just give it to those in my family and maybe one or two friends. So I knew how to put it together. So over the next year and a half, maybe a little bit longer, I wrote the narratives and then I began to collect the uh, the pieces to go and follow the narratives. Uh, and after that, I put it together. I sent it out to uh, quite a few people to uh, review and say, you know, am I an idiot? And uh, <laughs> well, well, I mean, you have to ask the question. Um, and then uh, most of them loved it or they had comments. My my youngest daughter, who's a 
communications person. She had, don't use this word, use that word kind of things. And we pulled it together. And then I found the publisher and I put it out there. And here we are. Awesome. Awesome. Look how, look how God used your granddaughter to get us, get the ball rolling. How about that? Yeah, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. <laughs> awesome. That's awesome. a good thing. Well, I was reading um, a little bit of the uh, blurb about the book, and it has some very unique concepts. And one of them is you talk about how the book assists people in finding their unique self. Could you kind of elaborate on that for us a little bit? Okay, so uh, the easiest way to do it is to build an illustration about it. So, so, so if you look at yourself uh, when you're born, you're you're born without all those attachments, all of those things that 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 alter your personality, who you are. You're also born as selfish. All, all babies are selfish. It's all about me. Mm -hmm. But as you grow and as the teachings are applied, you start to change and start to fit into this the the, the societal whatever. In some cases, the norm is completely different than others, yeah. and depending on your circumstance you grow into that person, that individual. Gotcha. But on the way there, you create facades. You create these things that, that these images or personalities of you that fit in particular situations or particular circumstances. And they're built not only to protect you, but to isolate mm -hmm. you from the world. Gotcha. And what, what, what begins to happen is you begin to live through those facades and not through your individual self. Okay. So, so in the book, the idea is that I, I use uh, stories, instances from my life as a, as a catapult to a conversation. Oh, so, okay. so now we're talking, you're, you're, you're reading something about me, you know, and you're going, oh, okay. And I, I've tried to write it in a form that it prompts you to question. So, so when you're getting through, you go, okay. And people... Uh, the the reviews and the people that call me and text me, all of them are saying, hey, I wrote this down. One guy sent me pictures of it and another guy sent me a text of it where they highlighted. And a lady told me yesterday that she's reading the book and then she's going to packages and send it to me because she wants me to see her comments. But I got to return the book. So uh, yeah, I, I, I laughed at that as well. I said, OK, you know, but but the idea is. That you as an individual, right, are are in there somewhere. The, the 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 concern is whether or not that individual can be located and coaxed out of whatever place it is into this world. So so as you go through the book and as you go through some of the things in there, uh, and you get to some of the pieces, the 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 idea is that you will start to say, well, you know. I, I understand that in my life, it was completely different, but that causes me to pause. Okay. And I, I always say uh, that if you want to learn something, you have to pause because if you keep processing and doing all these things, right, the thing that may be important to your life gets overlooked because mm -hmm. uh, everybody looks for these huge, these huge things. But I found that it's, the small times, the small moments, the small acts that that uh, accumulate and build, you know. So that's what the book does. It, it 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 helps you to find that place and to develop that synergy with that conversation. That's not a conversation with your facade, but it's a conversation with you. Awesome. So that it is good stuff. And good stuff. Now I want to um, mm -hmm. pry a little bit. Um, because I was being nosy and roaming around your website um, as we prepared for today. And I've heard you mention also um, your upbringing, some of your background. And one of the things on your website was that you, growing up, you were referred to as the, um, oh, he'll be all right, kid. You know, he'll be fine, kid. And then you mentioned earlier, you kind of had a, a, a very rough upbringing. I'm wondering how did that parlay as you wrote the book? Are these personal experiences in there so that people can kind of, you know, maybe that wasn't like you mentioned, that wasn't my experience, but I can kind of relate. And this is how he kind of unpacked and traveled his journey to become his unique self. Does it, does it. I, I understand. So, so the, uh, I will be all right. Uh, 
reference comes from the fact that it, uh, as a kid, uh, when I was growing up, uh, my mother was absent and my father was unknown, right? Okay. So I, I lived with my grandmother, Big Mama. So, uh, and, and my brothers and my sisters and my cousins and whomever, they'd all be around because everybody goes to Big Mama's house. But there was always someone around uh, to uh, own them, to lay claim to them. That's my kid. That's my child. That's my whatever, right? Mm -hmm. And then uh, when it came time for like birthdays and Christmas and all those times when people are giving and exchanging all this happiness, I didn't get those things. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, at Christmas time, I would, I, I wouldn't even, I, I wouldn't even enter to the room. Uh, it's that's, it's a difficult time for me. I wouldn't enter the room where they were uh, unpacking the presents and all that stuff mm -hmm. because I knew there was nothing under the tree for me. Yeah, okay. You know, so, uh, you know, and uh, the uh, phrase "I will be all right." I heard it a couple, three, four times, and things stick with you as a child. Mm -hmm. And and uh, you don't understand until you're older what they're saying. Yeah. You know that they recognize the what was going on, yeah. but you know, like I say in the book, no one spoke up for me. So so uh, and, you know you you carry that weight, and I carried it for quite a while. You know, mm -hmm. I still carry pieces of it. But uh, as you run into life instances, uh, say for meeting women. You know, and that's that's something young men do. You know, you go out there. For me, it wasn't like that. I I uh, I avoided uh, forming those kinds of relationships. Yeah, true. Uh, simply because of the fact that I didn't know what my next day was going to be like, even though I controlled my day. You know, mm -hmm. uh, so so as you know, you go back and you write, and there's some of those in the book that uh, talk about the. Uh, there's a piece in there that talks about being alone in blue. And and the idea of it, the imagery of that piece is built around the fact that you are a person, right? And you got all these thoughts and all these images and all these wants. But at the end of the day, it's just you. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so so uh, the, the the I know that the, my upbringing influenced my writings. I also know that, uh, you know, the the years when uh when I lived on the streets, because I, I left home at a very, very, very early age. Mm -hmm. So I lived on the streets for a while. And those years on the streets taught me the hard, hard, hard fact that life gives you nothing mm -hmm. excepting for an opportunity to be something else. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and so when you get to writing and you get to putting those things down in the book, you know, you, uh, your notes say to you, well, this should be with this. And all of a sudden, it, it's it's like, wow, because I'm one of those persons, I'll make a billion notes, then I'll sit down and whatever I'm writing, and I'll write it from start to finish. Uh, and then I'll go back and edit. But uh, it's it, it uh, carrying the weight, which I, I like I said, I still carry some of it. I carry echoes of it because mm -hmm. all of us carry echoes of it. And so when I get to the place where it gets heavy like that, I wrote a piece this week, uh, called the rage within mm. you know and uh, you know so it's this book was the i like to say the softer version yeah that's true. understood <laughs> yeah right so i'm working on a piece uh that a uh, book that's uh it's going to be different uh because i figured that if uh a person has read this or you know read pieces out of this they will be positioned for a different level of understanding Gotcha. Okay. And and uh, it's it's easy for us who live in this world, you know, uh, and to forget that 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 outside of that, if you take all of that away, there's nothing there but you, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So 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 in this book and in my next one, I try to illustrate for people that even though that 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 madness that was my uh, youth and then the madness that was my teenage years and then the first years in the military were uh, all preparatory to living the life where I'm at today you know and uh it it took me a long time to uh 
uh, unattach myself to all of that. I mean, it's, you know, and, and, uh, so I, in this book, I try to guide you to the place where you can do it. In the next one, I'm telling you, you got to let it all go. So listening to you talk, um, I'm, I'm just going to pry a little bit. I'm a little curious. When did you personally, in your personal journey, do you think you found your unique self? Oh, man. So uh, just I, in my military career, I did... Uh, special things for Akasan. I was one of those guys that you lived in the dark rooms or the dark places. So, um, and as part of that, you see portions of the world. You go places where, where there is a, where there is such a stark difference between what you consider norm and what they consider norm. Okay. Uh, so, uh, on one of those trips, I, I uh, stood there and I, uh, I, uh, I watched a child die. So, so, and, uh, and, and there was nothing I could do, you know, and, uh, uh, it awakened in me the idea that in a moment, in a blink, all of this is gone. So if you're not living within the, the time you have as fully as you can, you, you, you have truly, truly missed the opportunity to be somebody special. So, so, so I, uh, in the book, try to, uh, try to speak to that. It's difficult sometimes. I mean, uh, and, and the crazy thing about it, at least to me, it's crazy is that when people approach me and they want to talk about it, I had a guy call me on the phone and read portions of it back to me. And, 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 and I, I hear that and I hear th what they say after and it's about their journey, their mm -hmm. story, their thing, their, like, ex excuse me, that, that piece kind of, you know, yeah. I, gotta, I, gotta, I gotta fix that a little bit. Mm -hmm. But I apologize for that. No, no uh, but but it's it's taking the book from the perspective of people think it's a novel. I tell them, I said, if you can read it like a novel, bless you. Mm -hmm. But everybody that I've talked to or that has come back, they've always uh, said, you know, it takes a moment, yeah. you know, and, and which is OK, because it, it even though uh, uh, it took a. Uh, uh, short time to write some of the narratives the pieces are in there go back decades mm -hmm. you know so yeah so you know that is. There it is so i've heard you mention um a couple of the reviews of uh, um people are very impacted by some of the content what are what are some of the pieces the portions the takeaways that are resonating with some of the readers well 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 so so I have my book, you see, I bought yeah, book. See? <laughs> well, well, it happens, you know. Uh, and sometimes I, uh, you know, I, I wrote a piece in here uh, that's, uh, well, I, I uh, wrote about, uh, you know, it's hard sometimes to uh, stop. I, I thought I just had it. Okay, there. I, I wrote a piece that was... Uh, it's called Rice Covered Floor. And I wrote it. I was working on a project for Uncle Sam. And uh, I had seen a wedding, right? And uh, uh, and after the wedding, the neighbor, I, I wasn't in the wedding. I was just passing through the area. And and then I went less than a block, block and a half from, from the entrance where the wedding was. And I saw poor people and among, I'm not poor people, you know, I, I want to say destitute because they, mm. they were on the streets. And one of them was a young girl who was pregnant. So, so I wrote the book. I mean, I wrote the piece on the duality of it, you know, two young ladies, same day. One of them gets mm. married, begins her life and goes on and on. The other young lady goes to the same place, the same church, but she goes in the basement and has her baby alone. 
So I wrote that piece, you know, and and I wrote it, and I I, I was very proud of it. I, you know, I I wrote a good piece, and I let a young lady that worked with me at the time read it, and she says, "Can't stop there," you know. She's she, I mean, she was literally angry because she said you did not finish the piece. I'm sitting there going, "Okay," but then she told me, you know, that you got to look at it from a woman's perspective. Okay. You know, and, and, and from our perspective, you're talking about one being married, blah, 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 and one having a kid. What You know, you can't because I had ended it there. You know, she said, you can't. You need to close the piece. Mm-hmm. So the writings, I, I, I'll, I'll be inspired to write, but I trust what people say because that, that, you know, when you approach somebody and it's the, 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 the extemporaneous statement they make, you know, and, and without the preparation, it's most likely the closest thing to truth. That's right. You know, so so I, I, I trust that. And so several pieces in the book, the rice covered floor is a beautiful, but my my favorite piece, because I wrote it at a time when I was uh I was on a mission for Uncle Sam, but I was I I was uh I was very lonely, very alone. I didn't have anybody I you know, I you you write letters to and stuff like that. I could during that time, my mother was still alive, so I could have written her, but I never did. I wrote her very infrequently, and and I I just it was just a a period where there was just a void all around me. Gotcha. So I wrote this piece. It's called uh, Dream Dancer, and it, uh, you want me to read it? Sure. Uh, I, I, that, now, now I'm not a uh, you know one of those uh, persons who speak very clearly. I just I just do. So the piece goes, dream dancer, dance my dreams for me. Weave with your steps of fantasy, with flights of passion rising and falling as you leap and land, set my spirits free. Dream dancer, dance earthly and warm, wrapping me as you pirouette in the movements you take, spinning, turning, dipping, gliding, flowing, until dizzily I explode in a lover's climax. Dream dancer, dancing softly, magnificent and free, delicately with your body, expressing my emotions for me. Then fading, dream dancer, return my spirit, leaving me waiting, paused for the next dance, the next fantasy, the next dream to begin. (laughs) You like that? Not only does he write, ladies, he well, he's taken, but he he makes peach cobbler. I mean, I, <laughs> yeah, I I do. I I you know, yeah, uh, yeah. I cookies is awesome, one of my releases. Awesome, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So, um, you mentioned earlier in this interview, after reading that, that there's more to come. You're writing something else now. Yeah, I'm writing a, a different kind of book, slightly different. It's called, uh, well, the writing title of it is uh, Under the Red, White, and Blue. Okay. And it's it's one of the premises it, it, it's being written from is from that of a guy in the military or, the, or a warrior perspective. And it's all about privilege and non-privilege and the difference between the two and the reason why there's this movement for empowerment. Mm-hmm. You know, okay. uh, you know, so so it it's uh, it's uh and and uh, when I started writing it, I the uh, the center of it was in this book, the the one day at a time. But when I looked at it, it didn't match. You know, the mm-hmm. synergy was just not there. So I took it out, and then when I looked at it, I started writing another book. Mm-hmm. It's uh it's more of a look into America and the things that are going on in America and how they're affecting the world as well as a look back from the 1700s and the contributions and the way the people of color, not just black, but people of color, you know, have contributed to this Mm -hmm. and how uh, people of color, there's one thing that's lacking. I don't care who you are, if you're a person of color and that's ultimate privilege because you weren't born with it. Mm -hmm. And I break that down. It's, it's a, it's it's real delicate dance, you know. I I had a discussion with this uh one of the sitting chairs at Harstow University ab- about that because he was writing a book along the same thing, same kinds of lines, but he was looking at racism, 
Mm-hmm. And I told him, I said, racism is a privilege, you know? So, so I says, uh, and he, well, he, he disputed that. I says, think about it. You can't be racist to someone unless you feel as if you are in a position to do that. True. Yeah. But anyway, that's, that's what it's going to be about. And we should expect this book within the next year or so, or? Yeah. 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 It'll, it'll take about, uh, I'm about 60% through with the, the build of it. Uh, the, the parts that I'm, I have some research that I'm doing on, on periods of time, uh, because there's not a lot written about black contributions to the Korean War, okay. you know. Uh, so, so you know, you can find it about World War One and World War Two and other conflicts around, but the Korean War is somehow or another it's void. Yeah, that, that, that's another thing I point I take in the book is, yeah, yeah. you know, it, it's it's uh, interesting that uh, the statement's always written around about how the victor uh, writes the history. And the losers are just left with living that history, even though mm-hmm. it's not true. Mm-hmm. So I'm trying to find the other part of that story, you know. Gotcha. And, and I, I uh, interesting things come up, you know. But it's it's a it's a good journey. Mm-hmm. I, I got bit this one day at a time bit me. Now I want to do more. Do more one day at a time. Do more one day at a time. Now, yeah. um, I, got, I think I have one more question I want to ask you because you mentioned quite a few times about your military experience. And uh, my dad was in the military. I'm a military brat. And I, I just remember growing up, uh, his conversation was, there was so much duality in it. You know, it, it afforded him an opportunity to take his family and leave a small, small town and, and give me worldwide experience. You know, I, I've mm. traveled the globe. But um I, I constantly remember being in the house and, and he would grumble and gripe about some of the, um, I don't know how to politi- politically correct it. The military as a black man had its nuances and stuff. Yes, it did. <laughs> yes. I, I just yeah. how did, the, the, your military experience, does, does it play out in the book or, or there's some? Uh- there, there, there's some, there's people, there is a section where I talk about sacrifice. Mm-hmm. And, and, uh, when you go into the military, I went into the military because I was drafted. I, I, it wasn't my plan, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, and then, uh, I planned to go and do whatever they asked and come home. But when I got there and I got in and while I was still in basic, uh, they came and asked for volunteers for the, special work and all that kind of stuff, uh, special ops and all that nonsense. And I volunteered, you know, I, I figured what the hey, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, the things that they teach you there is how to survive in the world, like like no matter where you are in the world, doing whatever you're doing. But the other side of it is, is the exposure you have to all that's going on. Because because you work in uh, Intel and in those special projects, you're insulated from the rest. Mm-hmm. And so you, it becomes a, a window into how society treats you. And the reason why society treats you that way is because it's the norm. You know, that, that uh, for uh, you would think in a place where if I don't do my job, you could possibly die. That that racism, bigotry, and all that stuff would be absent. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's not. Mm-hmm. I have, can recall driving down before they got politically correct, driving down the street and look up and you'd look up at windows and you'd see the battle flag of the Confederacy in the window, letting you know what is going on here, you know. Mm-hmm. So... Uh, it, my writings about whenever I write about the military and things like that, I leave that out. Yeah, and I, I purposefully do that because it's a poison, mm-hmm. you know, and, and it's something that you have to deal with. But in the military, as a black man, the only thing about the military that is somewhat impartial is the promotion system for the enlisted because it's based on your ability to articulate through the test and through the actions that you do that you should be promoted. I'm sure there's some way to finagle that, but 
uh, it, it gives you an equal opportunity. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't take away any of the other stuff. It doesn't uh, lessen how often you may have to uh, accept something from another man that you would never accept normally. Mm -hmm. Uh, not, and and uh, women in the military nowadays are, I, I, and I had several ladies work for me, uh, but nowadays they're fighting another battle where it's coming back that male dominance, you know, I'm a man, so mm -hmm. you should be subservient to me. So they're living in that world. You know, I, 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 I look and shake my head because they needed a new target. Mm -hmm. I, 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 and I talk story. about that in red, white, and blue. They needed a new target. We stopped being a, an easy. We're still a target. Yeah. But but women, you know, you can always find a way to to yeah. to finagle that, and and the military reflects that because it re directly reflects society. Okay. Okay. You know, so yeah. Yeah. So you express a lot of stuff that my dad has. Uh, I've I've heard him say over the years. I mean, wonderful opportunities. Uh, I would I would not be as open minded and and aware of different cultures and everything uh, without that experience. But I am I'm very well aware that my dad paid some heavy prices uh, psychologically for that experience for me to have that. So, um, so when should we be expecting red, white, and blue out again? You said within the next year. Yeah, I, I would think it would be if uh, the writing progresses as it has been, some about summer next year, or, or mid the early summer next year, it should be done. You know, uh, and and uh, my expectation is that it's going to uh, weave itself directly into one day at a time, so that you can be well, one day at a time makes you more reflective. Mm -hmm. uh, the under the red, white, and blue will look at you and say you'll will you will look at it and say, hmm, you know, every day I watch that. Okay. And 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 uh, the difference in uh, the way it's going to portray a simple uh, 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 protest is, it, I, I think, is going to awaken some people. Because a lot of people don't support protests directly. They'll do it remotely. I have a mm -hmm. friend who, who says he'll write a check to support a charity, but he's not going to do the work. Okay. You know, and my idea is that maybe some people should start doing the work. Yes. Boots to the ground. Yeah. Boots to the ground. Yeah. So are you currently in the process of um, doing book signings and such for one day at a time? Can we catch you yeah, uh, it, in person? I know COVID's coming back, but, you know. Uh, hopefully it, it'll it'll just be a brush with the COVID thing. Yeah. I'm going to be uh, in Atlanta the weekend of the. 20 i'm looking for my phone because okay. <laughs> you know i i said that wasn't going to happen to me but it, it did so now i live by the schedule but i'm going to be in atlanta the, I, i'm pretty sure it's the weekend of the 28th of october it's yeah the tw weekend of the 28th of october I'm, I'm going down for a festival there i'll be in chicago uh not quite sure the dates, but it's early uh, October. At uh, I don't, I, I would give you more details about that, but you know, I'm going to start posting them on my webpage. Okay, all right, so people can catch you there. Okay. So okay, yeah, and I do put it out on my uh, uh, on my uh, Instagram and uh, of course Facebook. You know, uh, Arthur Quinn Hill or just plain Quinn Hill, uh, and it's I put the info out as it becomes available. Uh, I'm, but on the other side of that, if you go on my website, uh, which is uh, justquinn.com, just and just send me an email, uh, 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 I'll, I'll respond. Okay. I, I'm good about that. Or, or, you know, the book is there, and as I get more uh, adapt at doing it, I'll post the events as they come up. So it'll be a good spot. And, and also, I, I'm going to... Uh, uh, do something I didn't do with this one, except with my granddaughter. I'm going to post excerpts of Under the Red, White, and Blue it, so so that uh, people can look and go, okay, and I can get the feedback. You know, uh, I, I'm looking forward to the opportunity to dialogue. It's a conversation. If we're not having a conversation, what are we doing? That's right. Conversation is so vital in 
just the human experience, just learning each other, understanding each other. You know, our conversation is so important. Um, but I, I want to make sure I remember this because I'm getting seasoned. So sometimes if I don't say it right away, it'll slip. Um, <laughs> the grandbaby, is she, she's the administrative assistant. So she's helping you with all of this since? Well, well, they've they they've kind of kicked me out of the way, you know. <laughs> well, 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 they, 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 uh, I was in Atlanta uh, two weeks ago because of an event my granddaughter uh, set up for me. Uh, but she'll call; they'll call me up and they'll they they give me a list of things to accomplish. Awesome. And, That's what I was hearing. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, I I, I just look and go, what I got to do? What? <laughs> yeah, okay, all right. So, so my uh, my answer has been so far. I'm done. Okay, I'm done. I've done it. I'm done. You know, uh, not yet. I'll get to it to tomorrow. But oh, she's a she she's a uh, she's a intelligent young lady who's you know she's you know you know when they're in their early twenties, uh, you know I was off to the war. Okay. So so but she's in that point where 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 uh, the world is just really just opening up to her. Yeah. And, and and we encourage her, you know, just go out there, take that chance, you know, you know, so, 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 you know, that she's, she's my ride or die, you know. There so, you go. There you go. I, yeah. I kept on kind of hearing that theme throughout today. Yeah. So the grandbaby yeah. is somewhere around here kind of making stuff snap, crackle and pop. So that's mm -hmm. wonderful. Yes, she is. Yes, she is. All righty. So let me ask you my random question. And then I'm going to ask you one more time to give us the website uh, so we can keep in touch with you. But let me ask you the random question okay. here. See what we've got here. One day at a time. Awesome stuff. I wish I had learned that younger. It eliminates so much stress. <laughs> <laughs> what it does. So much stress. Um, wow, how appropriate. When you were a kid, what did you want to be when you grew up? I, uh, it sounds strange. I uh, had little or no expectation for the next day. You know, uh, uh, when I was young, you know, kids run around. They want to be this. They want to be that. You know, I, 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 I think the thing I wanted most was just to be left alone, because uh, it was, uh, you know, I was one of those guys who thought that, you know, if I wake up in the morning, I wake up a don't adult, and and it started too young, so it made me a cynic. But as I got a little bit older. I wanted to be a race car driver or an astronaut, everything else, but I always came back to writing. So I've always came back to writing. Okay. You know, and, and so so maybe that was uh, secretly was in the back of my mind, it was always there. Awesome. Yeah. It's but but I, I, I didn't have those wishes as a kid. It's a I didn't have story. toys. So, you know, when you don't have toys, you don't have to play those games. You don't um, you don't develop those things. Right. You know. It's a great right, writing yeah. is a great tool to escape. It's a it's a it's a great way to create the world that we want to create. You know, so it's mm. wonderful. Mm -hmm. And I, I didn't get an, an an opportunity to discuss today, but you know, hearing your story and your upbringing, you you give back, you you pay it forward, and you do help out the younger generation that are coming from same backgrounds that you've experienced, so that they don't have to you know, mentally go through some of the things. So I, I do want to let people know that you are also speaking to the younger generation as well, besides the grandbaby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I spend time with them. I I, uh, I think that the thing that's missing a lot of time with the younger, talking to the young people is respecting what they're saying. Yes. You know, uh, you know, however they're saying it, sometimes you need an interpreter, but, you know. <laughs> A lot of times these days. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just just getting text messages from some of them. I'm like, what is that? What is it? What did you say? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, sir, please tell us uh, the website one more time so we can uh, make sure we keep abreast of that. So when the grandbaby up, updates it and tells us where the book signings are, we can possibly show up in person. Just give us the website one more time. Yeah, it's uh, www. JessQuinn.com. Awesome. Well, yeah. sir, I have enjoyed spending this little short amount of time with you today. Uh, if I would closer, I would come and ask for some crust of the peach cobbler. 
Uh, but I wish you and the whole family nothing but blessings and favor and continue. What we've got two, another book coming, but some more books after that, I'm hoping. And I wish you nothing but the best. And I appreciate that. And I wish that back to everything you said reflects back on you. And, and, and I, before we go, I need to say this one thing. I love what you're doing. I love to, I love that God has put me in a position to do what I'm doing. Right. You know, I love that. And thank you for that. Thank you for that. That is all for this week's episode of The Male Perspective. I'm your host, Alana Reed, and I will see everybody next time. Bye.